Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with an Amiga 2000 motherboard. This is from Tom Meads again. I did say that I kind of owed him uh, one or two, or maybe three, uh, for letting me keep that other previous um, 2000 motherboard on the GBP, although the GBP I don't think is going to be repairable. We'll have a look at that later. Um, yeah, here is the A2000 board with broken phono jack for left audio. This board has been recapped, the audio jack was resoldered. I think this time both jacks will need to be replaced as no audio mixing to the right phono jack occurs. That's not something I was even aware of uh, when only that jack is connected. This is what I think should happen to allow for mono output. Well, have a look at that. I'm not sure the jacks are wired with a switch there, thinking about it. Uh, so he might be wrong there. Um, the CPU and Kickstart ROM have not been inserted. You can see they uh, aren't there at the moment. As the CPU socket was a bit green again, even though it has been cleaned the battery uh, around the battery previously. Uh, I did clean the CPU, the two push and IPA. It still looks a bit green on one pin. Hopefully this is just the audio jack that needs replacing, not a broken tray somewhere. This board is in very good condition compared to the last board I sent. Let me know, uh, cost of parts and labour, uh, nothing for that. Uh, the CD32 recap will wait till you have time. So yeah, thanks to Tom for sending this. So we've got no CPU, but I mean look at that around there. That is so, so, so moderate. You can just see just a tiny bit of discoloration here. You know, these look a little bit oxidised. Get the fiberglass pen on there, but those, there's nothing there. There's no damage there. It's literally, you know, it's been caught in time, this it's just around the battery. So I don't think uh, there's anything to worry about there. The socket looks really clean, actually. You can see that. It's a little bit green there. Can you see that? That one pin. I think that might be what he's talking about. But we can clean up again there, I think. I'm not going to uh, need to replace the socket. So on the back end of the board here, he's saying it's been recapped. They don't look like they've been replaced to me. Those look factory. Having said that, there are lots of caps on here that have been replaced, I think. I don't think these blue ones would have uh, shipped with this. But yeah, the solder points kind of just look factory. I don't you can tell they do on the underside as well, so if he has done that, he's done a very good job. So in terms of it being switchable, this is where I'm not sure, because you can see you've got three connections on here. Maybe there is a switch, I don't know. Um, you've got two there and one there. This is definitely the ground. And then this one here just seems to go nowhere. And then that's the audio, I think. I think the right one on these is the audio. So I don't think they are switched. I don't think you get mono mixed audio. We'll have a look at that. I'll check the schematics. But if that's the case, there might be nothing wrong with this whatsoever. I don't know. But you didn't say there was no audio out of one jack, so we'll test that. So I don't even need to test this. This is going to be the uh, quickest repair ever, I think. Uh, meter on continuity test. I'll show you the first thing. So these are the audio jacks here. Let's just uh, test from the centre to the connections here. So you've got to join this one here, centre, connections here, got joins. So we know the centre pin is okay. And if we do the uh, ground on the outside, you can see we've got a join, but not that great. Same here, this one's even worse. So you get near the end here, it's all right. But on the part here, you hardly get a join, but on the outside you do. This is a little bit uh, oxidised, so we need to get some contact cleaner onto that. So that was my first thought, and I thought, oh, maybe that's it. But the next thing we need to do is if we just follow the uh, connections. So the signal, if I show you, the centre point goes to this here. You, know, you can see a trace there. It goes up to that little component there, which I think is a resistor. It might be a cap. We'll have a look in a sec. Same on this side. Uh, but if you measure from here, nothing. See that? I'm actually on that middle point there. Nothing. It's detached here. I'll give you a close-up on macro. If we test again with this one, we've got a join. Retest that one from here. Got a join there. Nothing there. Yeah, so you're on macro. It's here. This here is a little bit worn. It's really hard to see. That might not even come out of macro. But that is where the issue is. We just need a wire from here to here uh, and clean up these contacts here with a bit of deoxit, I think. And maybe I'll use the fiberglass pen first and then just wipe over with uh, some deoxit. But that's it. That's what's wrong with this. It's crazy, really, because he's had to go to the expense of uh, you know shipping this out to me. Uh, I'm looking at this free of charge, but uh, and I'll perhaps post it back free of charge to try and make up for some of the cost of the uh, other things he sent me. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, just tinning up uh, the world's shortest uh, fix wire here. I'm hoping the cable, the cable covering doesn't melt while I do this because it's so short. 
yeah it's all right burning my fingers a little bit let's just stick that wire there a sec and uh, if we just add a little bit of solder containing flux so as I say it's, th it's this here we could in theory just bridge that little bit of trace there but you know what it's not going to be uh, reliable so uh, we'll just add some fresh solder and flux there we'll add some fresh solder and flux to this middle pin here I really need to uh, stretch the iron a little bit actually I've got a brand new iron actually that I'll be showing you soon which has been donated to the channel and it's just absolutely amazing I can't believe um, Dermot has sent me something so amazing actually so we'll just uh, stick that there, I can stick a bit more solder on that in a sec and uh, just reach this over here and again I can add a little bit more solder on that in a sec let's, uh, let's just do this down here first Yeah, that's not going to go anywhere now. And if we just add a little bit more on there and just make sure it's flat. Again, that's not going anywhere. So, you know, it's not particularly uh, amazing looking, but that's what's required. So I'll clean the flux off around there in a minute. We'll give it a little bit of a scrub down. Um, but with these here, all that's needed, can you see it's kind of a little bit oxidised on the top part? If we just get the uh, fiberglass pen onto here, I'm sure this will probably do it on its own, we just go around the uh, circumference, you know, the edge, the outer edge of the surface here on these. I'll do the other side in a minute and get right around the sides and things. But I'm pretty sure that's all that's going to be needed. And I will wipe over it with some contact cleaner as well, you know, some uh, deoxit. I've got some of that super high quality deoxit stuff. But it's quite common for this sort of thing to happen. I've had uh, connectors like this get dirty. I tell you what happens a lot on uh, modulator connectors. They get awful, those. Some of those are really super oxidised. I mean, I can see the difference there already. I need to go around the sides, but if I just test connectivity now, you'll see, hopefully, that it's uh, much more... Um, better contact, you know, if we test from here to here, look. Before, you could just press near the top there and you wouldn't get a short... Uh, and it's the same with this one, look at that. Anywhere up here before was not making a connection. Now it is. And we'll do this side as well, can you see? It just looks awful. Um, I've been doing the uh, composite video connector as well here, but hopefully after I've done this, you should see they look super shiny and clean, and the connectivity will be markedly improved. I mean, look at that one there at the top. Can you see the difference? I'll try and get you a little bit closer. If you look at the top, it's kind of, uh, well, it's grey and oxidised. The bottom's nice and silverish. Uh, this one still needs a bit more work, I think. But if we just uh, circle on that bit there, hopefully you can start to see the difference. So moving the board back a little bit, you can see the fibreglass uh, shavings here. So I'll get a little bit of uh, deoxit onto the end of this uh, cotton bud here and uh, just have a bit of a wipe around these actually. I'll get some on the uh, inside as well. But I'm pretty sure those are going to be absolutely perfect now. Uh, the only thing we need to do is just uh, clean the insides. Um, it's not that easy to get a cotton bud into the uh, internal part of the middle there. You can see it's just about squeezing into the end there. But I think what I'll do is just get an RCA Fono connector, stick a little bit of the deoxid on there and then just shove it in and out a number of times and rotate it while it's in there. That should do the trick. So I've got an old uh, chopped off uh, connector here that I've reclaimed. You know, I'll perhaps use it at some point, maybe on cable or something. It'll go onto cable somewhere. Just get a little bit of uh, deoxid on there. Uh, we'll focus on the audio ones first because that's where the main issue is. Uh, and just do a little bit of that. Do the same with that one. And we'll uh, do the composite uh, one as well. It's quite tight that composite one actually. You can tell it's had a lot less use than these have. But they are making a good connection so I'm pretty sure those are going to be fine. You know, I can feel the centre pin sliding 
all around there in the inside. There we go. So before we test it, I'll just uh, I'll clean on the top side here. You can see, look, it's a bit dirty, um, and we'll uh, clean that bit of uh, flux off on the underside as well. But we'll just have a little bit of a clean just around this uh, immediate area here. And we don't need to do much here at all because there's very little in the way of uh, flux landed on there. But we just need a little clean. There's a little bit of uh, flux here, you can see, I think that's where it's been recapped in the past. So uh, we'll give that a bit of a wipe around there as well, I think. So something else I would point out is, I had a look at the schematics, these aren't switched. There's no mono mixing mode or, you know, if you've only got one connected, it only mixes to one side, etc. That doesn't happen. It might do on the very early 2000s, if you get one of the original 2000s, the ones that came from, you know, the German design, the original ones there that have got the uh, pals or whatever they are on there um, I don't know, I'm not, uh, don't quote me, I'm just guessing I don't understand where Tom would get that idea let's just give that a bit of a brush yeah that's looking uh, a lot better there's still a little bit of dirt there, let's just get a bit more IPA on it so we've got audio and video connections there just need to get a ROM and a CPU in. Now I've got uh, the Kickstart ROM here from the uh, other board actually, the one I've been using of Tom's. So there's our Kickstart ROM. I'll stick a 68000 in this in a minute just to make sure it's okay, we'll clean up that single pin. But uh, I'm going to fit my Terrible Fire uh, Accelerator card in here, we'll cover this in another video. That's nice and tight. Just make sure it's firmly into its socket. So, booting up here, I've got a keyboard connected, hopefully I can use that to navigate because I haven't got a mouse connected at the moment, but that is the nice thing, someone pointed that out in one, one of my earlier videos there on the Amiga and I've forgotten about it, that you can use uh, a key combination and use the arrow keys, I forget what it is, I'll tell you in a sec. It takes a bit longer to boot when there's no floppy drive connected, so just give it a second. There we go. Yeah, I'm holding down Amiga, Shift and the arrows, and you jump quite a bit, and if you remove the, sh uh, the Shift and hold the arrows, jump with just the left Amiga key, you can see you can move it slower. So let's just go to Games, uh, and then you use left Amiga and left Alt to do your left click. Let's put Ghouls and Ghosts up, because I quite like the music on that. One of Tim Follins. Turn the volume up a bit. Sweet! I can hear left and right channels there. I can disconnect them. If I disconnect the right channel, can you hear that? Plug it back in. Remove the left channel. Plug the left channel back in. Sweet! Let's try a bit of Alien Breed Special Edition. So just but in sys test from the floppy drive here, so uh, we'll do test all memory. Bear in mind it's testing the 4 meg of Zorro 3 on the TF534 here at the same time, but I'll just let that go around a few times, just make sure the RAM's okay. 
and as you can see it's gone through at two uh, and a half passes roughly at the moment no problems so we'll move on to uh, testing with the original processor I'll remove the TF534 from the uh, coprocessor slot and we'll stick the 68000 in so I will clean up this socket with a little bit of uh, vinegar and some IPA in a minute um, just to make sure it's super super clean and I'll retest with the processors here but it's in there let's give it a try yeah no worries at all so we know for a fact Tom has cleaned this before but we'll just get a little bit of vinegar in there um, they are looking just a little bit green certainly that end one there and I'm just going to leave that for I don't know five minutes maybe I try and get big blobs of the vinegar there as you can see and have big drips of it to leak into uh, the tops of the pins and then just leave it to soak a little bit maybe ten minutes and while we're here we'll get just a little bit down here as well just on these components around that area and those wires but it's okay I think um, and again just around the battery area here but we're going to clean up that in a minute anyway I've used one cotton bud already you can see let me show you look how dark greeny grey that is just from uh, wiping this here so you know the perhaps was just a little bit of uh, alkaline still there not a lot and some of it's going to be the solder mask you know it's, the solder mask comes off a little bit easier when the uh, Alkaline has been on there for a while. I'll pour some IPA over this, you know, tilt the board on its side, pour some IPA here, and then it'll just run down here and it can brush it off and wipe it down with cotton buds. And we'll use some uh, kitchen roll here just to absorb the majority of this before we uh, pour some IPA on it. They're looking better already, actually. This one down here that was green, it's not green anymore. And that one over there is a little bit better. I mean, one thing you can do is you've got a little bit on the surface here, you can just touch with a little metal tool like that, and 99 times out of 100, it comes off. So, with a cap of our IPA here now, we'll just do the same sort of thing, but we'll have a bit of a brush. Uh, if you like corrosion repairs, I've got quite a few of them coming up in the form of Archimedes, actually. I've got some 3010s and some 3000s that were really kindly donated by Xavier uh, Zarkos. So I think one of those should go up uh, this week, hopefully, because I've got the first four, I think, of those working okay now. I just need to find some time over the next, you know, over the weekend, perhaps, to edit the first part. It takes an incredible amount of time to edit these videos and to render them and upload them and stuff. You wouldn't believe how much time it takes. Um, I know you might find, you might think I've got more time now. I am uh, have only got a part-time role since I lost my uh, job of 20 years. Um, but my health has just been really bad the last month or so, and I have been pretty busy in this part-time role. I've ended up doing more hours than I should have done, really. If you would like to support the channel, uh, please consider looking at the Patreon page. Just a dollar a month uh, makes a huge difference to me being able to do these videos. Uh, you know, it's not all about making lots and lots of money here, because I'm not making lots and lots of money. My uh, pay cut, because I lost my job and I'm only working part-time, is considerably less, less than half what was uh, roughly what was uh, earning before. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm finding it very difficult for finding funds, like for the moment, I'm having to wait till next month in order that I can uh, order some parts for those Archimedes, actually. Um, I, I mean, I don't really like uh, asking for donations, if I'm honest, but it's the only way the channel can continue for the moment. Um, things might change, you know, in a year, if, my, if this role I'm in um, matures, let's say, then I might end up being able to go back uh, and do more hours full time, you know, maybe on the same sort of salary I was on previously. If that happens, then uh, things will be totally different. The funding from Patreon won't be essential. But at the moment, Patreon is the only thing funding this channel. The donations and things um, have been absolutely wonderful. People have sent some amazing things for me to look at, some of which you've seen, some of which you've still got to see. I'm very, very grateful for all of your support. So the other thing we'll do here, 
all of the IPA has not evaporated yet I'll because uh, I'm going to be wiping these bits here to get the fiberglass bristles off but we'll just uh, clean up these with the fiberglass pen hopefully they should come up looking uh, like new yeah you can see the difference there already with those just got a couple of wires here if you don't press too hard you don't lose any of the silk screen it's only if you press hard for a prolonged period of time that you start to lose uh, you know like that resistor pack print there RP900 or whatever it says it doesn't come off uh, with uh, just a little bit of friction like this look at that they're looking a lot better compare the, the how shiny these ones are here to these these are looking a bit dull look but if we just give these a light going over let's just get a bit more of the bristles there there you go they're coming up like new and it's not I'm not being pedantic here trying to make them look shiny it's a question of getting off oxidization off the surface because it's probably got a little bit of the alkaline there that's interfered with it they'll go dull again naturally over time on their own but they look a little bit more weathered than any of the others on the board actually that one there's a little bit dirty it's coming up now let's just go a little bit further afield because these are looking dirty here as well look yeah these ones have definitely got a little bit of alkaline on there's just one or two and with those like I say I would just use a little sharp tool like this get on the surface of it and have a little scratch not a lot you don't want to scratch the uh, traces and things that lead to them but you'd be amazed at how the stuff uh, sticks to the surface there and even the fiberglass panel on its own is not enough you have to uh, scratch them back a little bit like this and then go over with the fiberglass pen yeah that one's pretty bad and still a little bit around that one there but if we clean around that now with some IPA and a cotton bud again should be pretty good and just clean up with the cotton bud and some IPA again we'll probably need a few cotton buds here because there's quite a lot of fiberglass dust around here now sounding sweet my favourite table I think on Pinball Dreams. Some people think the table's hard but I find it the easiest. Just disconnect the right hand side. So we lost the belt, so I've connect the right hand side again. And we'll just connect the left hand side. Sweet, it's working. done I will just clean up a few areas because can you see around here there's like a bit of uh, liquid or something 
you know, little marks have got onto that board at some point. It's uh, not had a, you know, a full clean, I don't think so. I'll go over this myself, look how dirty that is. I'll go over this myself now, just clean it up before I return it to Tom. I'll perhaps just give it one final test off camera. It's always a good idea when you've been cleaning because you could uh, damage something with a bit of uh, ESD. You can get ESD safe uh, cotton swabs, by the way. You might get some of those at some point. So I just want to show you, this is a Rev 6.2. So I've got a copy of the schematics here, and here's Paula. You can see left, there, right. So these are the audio outputs, and they come into each side of the op amp there, the LF-347. And at no point does the left channel merge with the right channel. There are no connections in between them at all. Yeah, I think that's just so the cutoff can affect both of these at the same time. That's the only thing they have in common. They have this cutoff connection that comes across here, this circuit here, um, and it, it comes up into the middle there and round it up into the middle here. So that's the only thing those two have in common, the cutoff circuit for the, presumably for the filter. Um, but at no point does the left channel get merged with the right channel to give you mono. Um, and furthermore, if you look here, these are identical with the exception of, on the right uh, audio one, the ground there is connected through a ferrite bead to ground as well, uh, the audio ground, I think. Um, the left one seemingly isn't. But yeah, there's no switching or anything going on there. These are not merged, if you look at, you know, all the way along here between left and right, the only thing they have in common where they join at one point of the filters is the cutoff. So I don't think that this board revision supports uh, like mono mixing through one of these. It's not intelligent to go, okay, yeah, you've only got one jack in it, so let's just mix mono through there. That doesn't happen. So it's blooming typical. I've just packaged it up to go back and labelled it up and taped up the box and then found, I took this out when it arrived. So you can see uh, there's a bit of a dark pin there. I've cleaned this up. It was uh, a lot blacker than it is now. Hopefully you can see it's, uh, it's okay. It's just a little bit of uh, wear on the surface on that pin. Um, I've done the best I can with that, with a fiberglass pen. But I've just tested that on my other board and it works fine. And I've done the same thing with the ROM. You can see through here the legs look a little bit greyed on that. That's as good as they're going to come out. Again, I've cleaned with a fiberglass pen and tested it and that works fine. So I'll stick that in there, stick it in a jiffy bag, open the box back up and uh, just slide these in there. So sorry to mention it again, but if you can support via Patreon, please uh, consider just donating a dollar a month or something. That would be much appreciated. It just means you can uh, order more parts, more systems to repair, and we'll get more videos. I'm sorry there's been a bit of a lull over the last few weeks. I've just been super busy trying to do various things. Um, repairs, I've spent a lot of time on the Archimedes stuff. Some of those will be coming up soon. I've got loads of uh, like a back catalogue of things that need uh, editing and finishing off in order to get those up. So there will be lots more videos coming your way. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.